Good morning. This is Gavin coming all the way from South Africa. I want you to please open your Bibles with me to the book of 1 John chapter 4. The book of 1 John chapter 4. I want to read a, a portion of scripture from here. And we're going to be looking at the word of God today concerning a very, very permanent issue. I want to expose Dr. John MacArthur and his heresy. Dr. John MacArthur and his heresy. 1 John chapter 4. I'm going to read in the King James Version, then I'm going to read it in the Knox translation. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they're of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby ye know the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of the Antichrist, whereof you've heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Let us turn over and I'll read it to you in the Knox translation. I like the Knox translation. It brings certain things out beautifully. 1st John chapter 4 not all prophetic spirits brethren deserve deserve your credence you must put them to the test to see whether they come from God many false prophets have made their appearance in the world this is the test by which God's spirit is to be recognized that every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ as having come to us in human flesh has God for its author and no spirit which would disunite Jesus comes from God this is the power of Antichrist now the very first thing that I want to tell you here and I've said it in previous uh, teachings is that John in his epistle and John in his book is his synoptic and John in the book of Revelation uh, is most concerned with this character of Antichrist he is most concerned with the unveiling of the spirit of Antichrist up over and against that he puts the glorious doctrine of the true Christ who is both God and man now here he says any spirit reading from the Knox translation that would disunite Jesus disunite Jesus from his divinity and his manhood this is a reference to the spirit Spirit of Antichrist because the spirit of Antichrist will always seek to disunite the glorious doctrine of a hypostatic union and this is an area that John seems and deems vitally important when demon spirits and preachers begin to disunite Jesus in any way from his divinity and his manhood being both God and man going against the biblical revelation and I can prove it to you that Paul taught this very same thing let's turn over to the book of Romans chapter 1 Romans chapter 1 Romans declares this particular thing. Let's read together. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated into the gospel of God, which he had promised to fall by the prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And here he talks of the manhood of Christ when Jesus was incarnated, who was made of the seed of David according to his flesh. There's his manhood, Jesus being 100% man, uh, and, was de and was demonstrated and declared to be the son of God with according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Here in verses 3 and 4 of the book of Romans we have the direct reference to the divinity and the humanity of Jesus Christ. The one the two natures, the divine nature of Jesus Christ and the manhood of Christ Jesus. The two, divide, the two natures of Christ in one person. The two natures of Jesus Christ, both God and man. When Jesus was incarnated as the word of God made flesh, the eternal son of God, he has always pre-existed. He always has existed because he is God. And he was a part of the literal creation as we read in the book of Genesis. Jesus literally took on human nature and that human nature literally so to speak tabernacled amongst us but he clothed himself his divinity was clothed with humanity he was 100% God and he was 100% man and Jesus never ever denied that Jesus continuously in the book of John said before Abraham was I am and if you read his great discourses I am the great shepherd of the sheep I am the vine ye are the branches and repeatedly repeatedly he uses the term his covenant name with God as I am he references himself as I am. Jesus is the I am man. Jesus is God in the flesh. Jesus is divine. Now John literally exposes the spirit of Antichrist and shows us any spirit that denies that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. God man, fully God, fully man is in the flesh. But you say to me, Gavin Potter, John MacArthur believes that Jesus Christ is come as God in the flesh according to 1 Timothy 3.16. How can I even use that scripture in quoting against him? Well, we're going to deal with something about his issue. Yes, he does say 
that Jesus is God in the flesh. He believes that. He's orthodox on that point. But when it comes to his understanding of the two natures of Christ in one person as pertaining to the doctrine of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, John MacArthur misses it con completely and gets right off into heresy. Now, what John MacArthur teaches concerning the blood of Jesus Christ is the following, that the blood of Jesus Christ, although precious, it has no efficacious power within it. In other words, those literal droplets of blood that was poured out for our sins has no power. He doesn't like to emphasize blood. He believes that blood is a, is a metaphor for death. It is a, a metaphor for a very violent death. So in other words, wherever you see in whom we have redemption through his blood is saying in whom we have redemption through his death. Martin Lloyd-Jones, one of the greatest Bible expository preachers of the past century, would have taken exception to this. He said you cannot put the word death in place of the word blood. The Holy Spirit purposefully uses the word blood. He uses the word blood. It is both the blood and the death of Christ that is important. It's not just the one. You cannot have the one without the other. Jesus had to shed his blood. We, we, we as evangelicals, we as Pentecostals, uh, b have a bloody religion. We believe in a bloody religion. The Old Testament was literally drenched in blood, as is the New Testament. It is literally inaugurated by the very blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of the God-man. Jesus shed his blood. Now the problem is, is about this issue of the blood of Jesus. People like to think that it's metaphorical. Well, if the blood of Jesus Christ and every single reference to the blood of Jesus Christ is metaphorical, then that means that your salvation is metaphorical. Because that's exactly what they're doing. What are they going to do in the book of Exodus? Where uh, Moses was instructed over there to put the blood upon the children of Israel. What, what are we going to do? Is that metaphorical? Is our salvation metaphorical? Why don't we just make the whole Bible metaphorical? No, these people in some way are denying some aspect concerning the two natures of Christ in one person. They are denying that the power of God is within the blood. Turn with me, please, to Acts 20.28. 20, John MacArthur is an unmitigated heretic on this point. He actually calls the notion of having the blood of Jesus Christ cleansing you a bizarre notion. Acts 20.28. 20, Acts 20.28. 20, this is what the Holy Spirit says in the Word. Let's read together. For I have not shunned to, de to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. To feed the church of God which he has purchased in his own blood. Look at how the Holy Spirit puts it over there. It says that you are to feed the church of God which he has purchased in his own blood. The blood of Jesus Christ is divine. There is a divine aspect to the blood of Jesus. God has purchased it with the very blood of God. It is the very blood of God that came out of Jesus' veins. According to John MacArthur, it's just human blood. It's just human blood. It really is precious, but it has no power within it. According to his doctrine, no, states the Holy Ghost here in Acts 20:28. 20, it is the blood of God. Feed the church of God, which he has purchased in his own blood. God purchased the church with his own blood. God has bestowed upon the blood of Jesus Christ a divine worth, as it says in the book of 1 Peter. It's for you have not been redeemed with perishable things such as silver and gold from your pewter way of conduct but with the very life blood of Christ the very blood that was poured out John MacArthur denies that fluid has any power well then he's in denial and he's, he's out and out denying the whole New Testament teaching concerning the blood he is going against everything that the old Puritan divines and Charles Haddon Spurgeon J.C. Ryle and all the great men of God of the past he has an issue with the blood of Jesus Christ he says it has no power to atone for man's sin it has no power. It's just a reference to bloody death. It's just a reference to a violent death. It really doesn't have power in it. There's no, let's get off this bizarre notion. This is nothing more than stripping Jesus in some way of the divine aspect and the human nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what he's busy doing. Turn with me now to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, the ninth chapter and the 14th verse. The Holy Spirit says in the ninth chapter and the 14th verse of the book of Hebrews the following. Hebrews chapter 9, we're reading from verses 14. The Holy Ghost says, For by one offering, oh, now I'm in the 10th chapter here, I need to go to the 9th chapter, 9, 14. 
for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a hypha sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh this is talking about the lambs and the bulls that were offered in the old testament and now how much more should the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit notice the term we just read about the eternal spirit in romans chapter one how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god purge your conscience from dead works take note of something take note of the sentence construction that the holy spirit put in the word for if the blood of bulls and goats let's go how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself the blood of christ being offered through the eternal spirit jesus offered the blood of christ through the divinity of christ the divinity of christ gives the blood of jesus christ power it says how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit jesus is both god and man and when jesus said for their sakes i sanctify myself he blessed his work there was the offering to god there was the offering to god he was offering the blood of jesus christ as a perfect offering to the lord he was offering his sacrifices. Matthew Henry wrote in his great commentary over there, <coughs> when Jesus literally gave us the bread and the wine, the symbols, he was literally blessing his work. He said, this is my body which gets broken for you. This is the wine of the New Testament which is inaugurated in my blood. He was blessing his work. And here he offers, he said that in the high priestly prayer of Jesus. He said, I sanctify myself. He was literally offering himself through his divinity, offering that blood through his divinity. Therefore, the blood of Jesus Christ has power. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God purge your God, uh, conscience from dead works to serve the living God in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins Ephesians 1 7 says in whom we have redemption you've been bought out of the marketplace of slavery not just by the death of Jesus but by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ you have been bought by the very blood of Jesus Christ out of the marketplace of slavery, you were washed inwardly and outwardly. Become the very exclusive property of Jesus Christ. Bought by the very right of his redemption. The redemption that is ours in the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood. How much more shall the blood of Christ? God has bestowed on that blood a divine worth. He calls it precious. It is the precious blood of the God-man. The blood is divine, as Acts 20, 28 says, and as Hebrews 9, 14 says, he offered himself through the eternal spirit. That blood was an offering through that eternal spirit. And that eternal spirit of God the Son literally permeated that blood, thus making that blood powerful. You said, what kind of new doctrine is that? Well, that's exactly what Andrew Murray believed. That's exactly what Charles Haddon Spurgeon believed. That is exactly what John Owen believed. That is what exactly what the Puritan divine believed. believed that the blood of Jesus Christ has power with God. God calls it precious but we don't want to hear the warning of the Holy Ghost concerning people that want to tread underfoot the Son of God and count the blood or where would they be sanctified and unholy thing doing despite to the Spirit of grace. This is exactly what John MacArthur does. He teaches the same heresy as Braxter who wrote the New English Bible. They want to substitute the word blood for death. It is both the blood and the death. When you have that, you have most confusion. In fact, if you don't believe in the blood, you cannot be saved. If you don't believe the blood literally atones and it literally remits your sin, you are heretical according to the word of God. John MacArthur is an unmitigated heretic. He teaches the same heresy as the New Age Bible editor, Mr. Braxter. But he didn't get that heresy from there. He got it directly from a man called R.B. Theme. He sat in these conferences. He never makes mention of it. He never talks about being in R.B. Themes meetings. He was there in 1964 and he teaches diabolical heresy with regard to the blood, saying, oh, the blood has no power. When you read John MacArthur's commentary on the book of Hebrews chapter 9, he denies that Jesus literally went into the holiest of all, into the heavenly temple not made with human hands, and he took his blood and he sprinkled it upon the heavenly elements. He denies the doctrine of the cleansing of the heavens. Before anyone could go into that holiest of all, before anyone who died could go to heaven, the heavens had to be cleansed because that, that, that temple had been somehow contaminated by man's sin. It had to be cleansed with his very own blood. He put that blood on the mercy seat. He applied that blood. 
Oh, no, 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 no. John MacArthur denies the whole teaching of Hebrews chapter 9. He twists it. He mauls it. The man is dangerous. The man is heretical. And when any astute theologian shows that John MacArthur is a heretic, you've got Philly, Joy, Philly Boy Johnson and McGraw and all his weird stuff busy trying to defend John MacArthur and his heresy. No, my friend, it's not just his death. It is his blood and his death in whom we have redemption through his blood, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins, in his death, no, in his blood. The literal blood droplets of Christ. I see people like Jackie Ulmore and others hold to a similar heresy. If you don't believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, you are not saved. Sorry, Salvador Ung Hayworth. If you don't believe the blood has literal power, you are denying an aspect of his divinity and his deity in one person. You are denying his manhood and his godhood in one person. This heresy is Nestorianism. Any spirit that would disunite the Lord Jesus Christ from his divinity and his deity, somehow disunite like the Jehovah's Witnesses or Kenneth Copeland or Mary Becker Eddy. Do you know that J John MacArthur teaches a similar heresy, although he tries to condemn Kuo Copeland by quoting First Peter? He teaches the exact same thing. John, uh, Kenneth Copeland writing into a, in a 1972 newsletter wrote, when the blood was poured out, it did not atone. Mary Becker Eddy says there's no power in the blood as it, as it coursed through Jesus' veins, nor was it powerful when it literally was shed on, on, on the accursed tree. John MacArthur teaches the same thing. He just says it's violent death. This is calling the blood of Christ something common. Oh, it's just human blood. Trample underfoot the Son of God and count the blood wherewith you have been sanctified in the holy thing. God <coughs> calls that blood precious. God has bestowed upon that blood some eternal glorious value. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, for you have not been redeemed with perishable things, such as silver and gold, from your feudal way of conduct, but you have been redeemed with the precious lifeblood of Christ. You see, when you go off on one fundamental Bible doctrine, you begin to embrace other heresies. You see, he's gone off on the blood, and now he's embracing the beast of the book of Revelation. He is now embracing the beast. He now says you can take the mark of the beast and be saved, and that's led for another teaching that I'm going to be doing. You cannot deny the blood of the everlasting covenant. How much more? In whom we have redemption through his blood. The blood of Jesus is precious. The blood of Jesus is powerful. It says over there in First John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son. First John 2 says the same thing. My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not, but if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not even for us, only but for the sins of the whole world. We're justified through the literal blood of Jesus, that fluid that coursed through his veins. John MacArthur doesn't believe it. And therefore, John MacArthur is a heretic on the word the basis of Scripture. He is denying fundamental Bible doctrine. He is of the spirit, according to First John chapter 4, of the Antichrist, because it, ceases, it, it somehow ceases to deny that the blood of Jesus Christ's divinity was literally, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ was permeated with that divinity. That is why it's powerful, applied on by the Holy Spirit. 1 John 5 speaks of how the Holy Spirit works in the Word, and He works in the blood. There are three that bear records in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one, and they are green one. And there are three that bear record on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. The Holy Ghost bears testimony to the Word. You're begotten again by the Word of God, and He bears testimony to the blood of the everlasting covenant. Sorry, John MacArthur. John MacArthur, according to the Bible, and the Bible definition is of the spirit of Antichrist. And he literally unveils this teaching concerning the doctrine of Antichrist for us as Christians. We need to believe what the Word of God says in these days of this great apostasy. John MacArthur is a theologian preparing the heart of church for the beast. That's all he is, essentially. He's a moron teaching another moron how to be a moron. That is what he is, essentially. John MacArthur is a heretic. God bless you.